SGC here and we are back for before and after because uh, we can't go outside and the cinemas are open. So we're gonna do some uh, Netflix before and after. Netflix just dropped a lot of Ghibli stuff on its platform. I, I know it's already been like online for a while, but Canada just got it. And we're gonna go down memory lane of uh, revisiting some Ghibli classics and uh, some lesser known Ghiblis. And there's some stuff that I haven't even seen. And I don't know, understand why I never watched it when it first came out. But anyways, if you haven't heard Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind. This is why we're here. This is 1984, pre-official Ghibli. This is based off Miyazaki's 1982 manga of the same name. Super great. If you love the movie, definitely check out the manga because it fleshes out so much more of the politics and the dynamics and relationships of more of the characters. So, I didn't know this, but this was produced by Takahata. Um, Toshio Suzuki wasn't producing, so that's an interesting thing. And Joe... He Saishi is uh, doing music, so that's great stuff. And one thing I didn't know was Topcraft. Did you know? I didn't. So let's share information. Topcraft was the production studio for this film, but it was dissolved in 1985, which is a year after this movie came out. And Miyazaki, Suzuki, and Takahata bought the studio and laid off most of this animation staff and changing his name to Studio Ghibli. So that is the history. This is the first one. This is this is huge. It, it, it really set the bar for Japanese anime for me in terms of the scope, in terms of characters, of action, the art, the cinematography. And I've probably only seen this only five or six times. I don't revisit it too often. But I, I'm here for that. So every time I've seen it, I, I've, I've seen it in Cantonese dubbed and Japanese. Uh, I think I saw it like once in the theater when I was doing a rerun screening here locally. So that was cool just to witness that on the big screen. Now we're going to do it home video style. Wow, like I have such a great impression. I know what I'm getting into in terms of the tone of characters, the pacing. Granted, the pacing is a tad bit slower, but it is Japanese. They tend to be slower than Hollywood anyway. So there's that. And going in again, I think this time I would really try to pick out stuff and see see if I can find anything else. You know, refining my cinephile mind all the time and my and my you know, do I notice this and that? And then I definitely will compare it to whatever's coming out. So thank you Netflix for putting this up so I can actually do this like comparison as it goes just to see like where Ghibli is going in terms of quality, uh, story, and just everything. So looking forward to that journey. And we're gonna start here with Nausicaa 1984. And yeah, overall, I mean, it, it, it it's great. So I don't know, like, re-watching it, what's that going to do? I know it aged well the last time I watched it. So I think it continue would do that. So there's that. And I talk too much. But hopefully hopefully you'll join me in this journey of just re-watching a lot of Ghibli stuff. And I definitely can't wait for the stuff that I haven't seen. So there's that. Anyways, that's it. This is before. And this is after. Okay, so 117 minutes. Wow. I would definitely say rewatching it this time around and having read the manga makes me feel different. So first off, I didn't know this until after the fact, so I'm horrible with retrospective because I never do my research. But the manga came out in 82, the movie 84. The manga actually didn't finish until 94. When Miyazaki made the movie, he had 17 out of 59 chapters finished. Which makes a lot of sense. Because when you watch this now, it's a long movie, but so much is packed into it. But at the same time, nothing really happens. Like when you really think about it, we have the introduction to the Wind Valley. 
then the to Tolkienzia people, and then the Plygit Plygit people. We travel back and forth from A to B and C, and then we just travel a lot. Good props on the characterization of Nausicaa and Aspel, and that's basically it. And we also got the princess, I guess. But actual characterization doesn't really happen here. We get the very strong-willed, nature-loving, animal-loving Nausicaa, and Asbel is just there. And everyone else is also just there to, to just say a little bit of tidbits of things. Obaba had more lines than a lot of other people. We have the regular soldier who keeps trying to weasel his way up to the ranks. And we also got a was a great warrior who shows up and pretty much does nothing. And also the Asbel's people. So when I think about this film, I always think that it's super long. And I was just like, what happens? And having rewatched it just like minutes ago and doing this, I realized that being the first non-Ghibli film, it is crazy. Like the scope of it all. The scope of it all, when you read the manga, which is 59 chapters, pretty short for contemporary manga. But seriously, right now you can get it in two formats, seven volumes, or the crazy everything together from Viz. Which I got right here. This is a tomb of a thing. And it was, one, how much is it? It's... It's pretty cheap actually, $67.99 with 7 volumes, having that, you know, typical, and it's larger format and you get a poster of some sort that I already bend accidentally from the years of it when I put it into the tomb, so gotta flatten that out, but seriously, yeah, so this is, re this is the size, let me give you a comparison, One Punch Man is like this. So One Punch Man is already $12.99 Canadian. And then granted, the chapters, if you buy it, the seven chapters, it's this size as well, but I don't think it's hardcover. And yeah, yeah, I mean, granted, it is black and white, but seriously, it is a bang for your buck. So definitely, if you never read it and you want to all at once, definitely something to look into um, the next time you're in a comic shop or wherever. So having watched this and realizing the fact that there was a lot more characterization in the manga, so many things make much more sense. And going forward, Castle in the Sky is our next film. And this is technically Studio Ghibli's first like official Studio Ghibli banner film. And when I really think about it, juxtaposing what happened in Nausicaa and Castle in the Sky, just from memory, I don't remember, but I feel like Miyazaki learned a lot in terms of pacing and narrative, and I'll talk more about that in my before segment of Castle in the Sky. But anyway, back to this Nausicaa. So yeah, nothing really happens in 171 minutes. We jump around a lot, characters just say this and that, but still, it is so crazy. The concepts, the world building, the realization of what is the Sea of Decay in terms of the story, the music by Joe, Hisashi, great stuff. And I looked at like the credits and going forward with Ghibli, Hisashi works a lot with Miyazaki. So I definitely am looking forward to when Hisashi isn't around, like how much impact does his music really bring to the table when you have this different composers for other films directed by Iseo or Goro. Or other people. So all in all, Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, really great premise, large scope, lots of stuff happening. We have nations, we have, you know, small poor con countries, and we have, you know, fighting factions of this and the such. Like in the manga, you know, YouTube is vast. Someone's probably done a, you know, manga versus film video, but there's a huge portion of it that the, you know, the arm, army people, they have an actual arc. Like, Lord Yapa, Yupa, goes off somewhere. 
but you don't really see it in the film. He's like, I'm gonna check something out. He sees the Great Warrior throbbing, throbbing, and he like slips away. But he actually does a lot more and sees a lot more. So definitely check out the manga. Great praise for the manga. And yeah, I am so happy that Netflix picked it up. And I'm so bummed out that I found out I can't find my Blu-ray of this film. I was looking at at the Netflix and I was like, this feels kind of SD. Did it feel like this when I was watching the Blu-ray? Try to look for it, couldn't find it. Found everything else I had except for that and a DVD of Porco Rosso. So there's that. Anyways, I've been talking a lot already, but overall, Miyazaki's first tor torpedo? Was it torpedo? Well, I talked enough already, but seriously, Miyazaki and company with Top Craft coming in to do this Nausicaa film, great stuff, and I just cannot wait just to compare and contrast as we go along with what Studio Ghibli brings to the table as the years come by. Castle in the Sky, whoa, cannot wait. Anyways, that's it. Keep liking, keep watching, and subscribe, and remember to share, because sharing is caring, and with all the stuff that's happening in the world, stay healthy and take care. Out.